Who dat? Because the last time we left, the last words were go, go box. I just wanted to say who dat. stand here in a second and sing and worship our God, and, and my prayer is that for me and for the rest of us, we use this worship time uh, to look at him, uh, to take him in, to say thank you through our voices for all that he does and all that he is to us, to prepare our hearts and our minds to hear his word, uh, and so that when we leave today, from this moment on, I'm going to ask this question, how many of you came this morning to be changed? Every time we walk in to our God's presence, that should be our just prayer, is that we are changed to be more like Him. So that's what my goal is, or what God's goal is for us today. The worship, the prayer time, the fellowship, all of that stuff, and then opening up His Word, that we are changed to be made more and more like Him. So that when we walk out there at the end of the service, we can impact a word of the world that needs to be loved well, to hear the truth of Christ, and to be encouraged. Talks about it. Close off the book of Galatians today. So let's pray and we'll stand and sing, okay? God, we are uh, grateful for who you are in our life, Father. We're grateful for all the ways in which you bless us. Shall I start over? Yeah. Yes. Welcome to Grand Lake Community Church. <laughs> Thanks for the gift of laughter. All right, let's pray. Sorry. God, just to continue in prayer, thank you for all that you do to us, for us, and through us. And through your loving grace bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ, Father, we can fellowship well. We can go out into a world that needs to be touched and encouraged because of who you are in and through us, God. So as we stand today and we worship who you are. May our hearts and minds be focused on you, stayed upon being gratitude, uh, grateful for all that you do in our life and loving you back. May you be blessed by our time in worship, in prayer, in fellowship, and in opening up your word, God. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
announcements, if you have your bulletin, uh, take it out there. Youth group starts next Monday night. Tomorrow. Oh. That's yeah. <laughs> next. Monday. All right, uh, take out your bulletins. Um, tomorrow night, youth group starts. And uh, on the back side of this, you will notice that there's a plea it's out, and that is volunteers to help Jennifer with this. Uh, right now, uh, I think there's just a couple folks that have volunteered. We'd love to have lots of folks uh, come alongside Jennifer and, and the kids in this uh, in this ministry, along with providing a light dinner, uh, help us to kind of make sure the kids get fed very quickly, and then we have a chance to have uh, um, uh, ministry time and fellowship. Okay. Second thing is, is next Sunday morning at nine o'clock, cross training class begins. Nine o'clock downstairs, uh, we'll have cross training, and the name of the book, baby, is what? Walk the walk you talk. Okay. Good title. For us as Christians, walk the walk that we talk, uh, and that'll be downstairs. And then Deb Coons, you have quite a few people uh, signed up for women's Bible study Wednesday mornings, beginning October 16th at 10 o'clock. Uh, address and everything is on here. If you would like to be a part of this, I'm going to send this around again. Deb, anything you want to add to that? Um, no. Okay. 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 Okay, very good, cool. Uh, all right, kids, come on up. We'll pray over you. And then while the kids are doing that, I want to take a moment to recognize a couple of our youngsters, okay? Uh, Natalie Graham. I see you. Come on. Absolutely. Graham. Natalie Graham. Graham. She's like a singer. She's a singer. Graham. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. Um, Nats. Had, uh, an outstanding performance uh, yes. at the swim meet. And this is what's amazing. There were how many, how many people from Clarkson and Soap? How many, how many swimmers? Eight? From Soap. Yeah, from two. Well, two of you, and then Clarkson had what? Yeah, I guess 30 some odd folks. 34, yeah. 34 folks. Natalie took first in the 200 individual medley, <laughs> and second in the backstroke. It's really, really cool to see that. With that many numbers out, numbering you guys, it was just cool to see that. And then uh, some guy named Jace. Come on up here, buddy. Come here, bud. I know that uh, as athletes, these guys always can see how they can improve and, and, and they focus on maybe I should have, could have, and would have done this uh, a little bit better. But this young man, we're going to do change on the football game, on the, at football, the high school and JV game. So yesterday I had a chance to watch the JV team. This young man was thrown all over the field as the quarterback. Number four was all over the place. Right. I knew you were thinking about the interception, aren't you? Yeah, we don't want to think about that anymore. Man. It's all we want to think about the touchdown, right? It was awesome to know that these two young folks, uh, one, represent Christ. They represent you all. Uh, and as they go forward as competitors and as students, it's just nice to know they have Christ in their hearts. Huh? Mom and dads, good job. Good job. <laughs> Father God, we uh, again just celebrate with who you are in these kids' lives. We thank you, God, that we can celebrate with them and, and have fun with their uh, their lives as they compete and they step out in faith, God. We pray over our kids as they go downstairs to learn more and more about you. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Kids go that way. Everybody else stand up and make like a good fish and say hi to people. Jump around. Say hi to make like a good salmon.
you are alive and well, Lord. In the name of the Father, Lord, that we can have your peace, Lord. And we love you and thank you for adopting us and making us your own, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We gather together to lift up your name.
receive our offering, um, a couple quick things uh, that I didn't mention in the bulletin. Uh, that is, uh, there is a, a name, Sean, uh, in our bulletin. His address is in there. We have a that is behind bars right now. Um, we've, he's received a couple of cards from us as a church family. I just want to encourage you again to be the hands, heart, and feet of Christ. Uh, and take some time in the next few days. You've got a card. Um, I used this phrase before. We don't have much of an excuse to do this kind of thing. We can say, well, I'm really busy. And if we're too busy to take five minutes to encourage someone else, you are too busy. <laughs> too busy to even hear maybe the sound of our God. So his address is in the bulletin. Take some time to do that. I know from talking to his mom that when he receives these, he's uplifted greatly. Absolutely great. The other thing I want to make sure I, I, I say, and that is that youth group, those of you who are interested and, and want to hear more information about what it means to volunteer, uh, Jennifer is going to meet in the room right off here. She'll be standing here at the end of church service. Um, and uh, when we close in prayer today, uh, she, she said two minutes. <coughs> two minutes. That could be an NBA two minutes. It could be an NFL two minutes. I'm not sure, but two minutes is there. Okay. Anyway. She'd like to see any of you as, as much as possible, and she promises to get me in and out real quick. All right, let's bring over our God, as we sang that last song, and as I contemplate this letter to the Galatian church from Paul, uh, it is everything that was in that song, the uniqueness of Christ, the incredible sacrifice of Him for us, the, the absolute truth in who Jesus Christ is, to deliver us from our sins, because it's at the cross where justice and mercy meet. Where, Father, we are exposed as sinners, but healed because of Christ. So, Father, we thank you for pointing us through song back to you. And, God, this morning, as we get ready to receive our offering, I just pray that, uh, as your word says, that we would give back a portion of what you provide to each of us with a glad and cheerful heart so that we might do good things in this church building, but also far beyond it, to our missionaries, to other ministries that are beyond the valley as well. But God, you would also hold us accountable to what you provide, that we handle what you provide to us effectively and honorably to lift you up. Father, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, we're uh, in the last chapter of Galatians. If you haven't been with us for a while, we've been in the book of Galatians for uh, a few months. And uh, this is an incredibly powerful book. Uh, at times, it's kind of Paul gets in the face of the Galatian church, and subsequently that means he gets in our face as believers, that we don't get caught up in the falseness and the uh, empty road that is religion, that is made up of man-made rules and regulations. That, And I understand that organizations have to have some things that help hold us together. I absolutely understand that. But if we're not careful, which is what Paul is trying to get them to understand, we will miss out on the incredible truth of Christ because we have our minds and our, our actions focused on ourselves and what we think that we do. And so today, as we, uh, as we look at the last chapter, I'm going to begin in chapter 5, but we'll skip forward and finish off chapter 6. Um, I'm going to talk about the tender strength of our God. And that's such an odd pairing, the tender strength the powerful, tender strength of our God and His work through you to make sure others are built up. And the balance in all this that Paul wants us to understand and all Scripture wants us to understand is that it's the balance of, of works and faith and doing for others and not letting that puff us up. Not letting us get boastful and arrogant and prideful because all that we do to help others doesn't make us better than anybody else when we serve one another. In fact, as we're going to learn today, it fulfills the law of God through Christ. When we serve other people before ourselves. Now, as we've talked about, if you haven't read Galatians, it's a, uh, it's a book that continually presses uh, points back to Jesus Christ. And the warnings of not drifting away from the centerpiece that is a relationship with Jesus Christ and get caught up in these man-made things that are called religion and self-righteousness, throwing them away, which is what was taking place with this group of, of, of Gentile believers. The, in came some religious leaders and tried to get them to understand that circumcision, man-made rules and laws from Old Testament times were to be followed. 
Yeah, Jesus is okay, but you can be new and improved by doing these other things. And Paul is saying, no, don't be led astray by that. Don't be bewitched by that. Make sure that we do not drift away from the very centerpiece of Jesus Christ, giving us our freedom from the yoke of slavery, attached with sin, attached with self-made regulations and guidelines, and in the middle of that, losing track of a relationship with Christ. I've kind of mentioned this passage, or this particular verse, maybe not every Sunday, but it's at the very heart of the letter to you and I. And it's uh, chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 1. If you don't have anything else underlined in your Bible, this is a good one to underline. I hope that your Bible is becoming more and more marked up. I hope that your Bible, the words of the passages, the, the pages in your scriptures are being marked up like the good old-fashioned yellow pages in the old days. Okay? That it's being marked and highlighted with things that mean something to you. Things that are pointed out uh, in church and far beyond. Paul tells the Galatian church in chapter 5 verse 1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Don't go back. Don't go back to that aspect that is captive <coughs> by our flesh. But also by man made religions and rules. Don't go back that way. You were set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not turn back to one, the yoke of slavery of, of religion. He wants us to understand how important that is. I'm going to skip forward in the verse, same chapter, verses 13 and 14. Same chapter. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement... You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Don't use our freedom for self-indulgence. Don't use our freedom to help make sure someone else is pressed down. Someone else isn't given the opportunity. Someone else is looked down upon because they're caught up in sin. As we're going to read today, the whole law is fulfilled in that aspect of serving one another out of love. Out of love. So that others are uplifted. One of the greatest phrases you hear around uh, is there, but for the grace of God, what? I go I, or I go. If it wasn't for God's grace, man, I'm lost. <laughs> We're gone. And sometimes in religion, sometimes even in relationship, we forget that I used to be there. In fact, I fall into it every now and then. Religion boasts, uh, creates a boastful, arrogant pride. And even when we are sinned, we have the religion to cover us up and make us seem better than somebody else. And Paul wants us to understand that it is through love and serving others that we fulfill the law that God has given to us. So 22, I'm going to read verses 22 and 23 of chapter 5 as well. And it's going to lead into chapter 6. Okay? He's talked about the, uh, uh, the fruit of the flesh, what happens when we indulge in the flesh. But in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience or long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now those of you who have been here for a while understand that sometimes when I talk about the crucifixion, I mention that it's a long-suffering death. It takes a while for someone who has been crucified to die. You and I are called to put the flesh to death. How often? Every day. Every day. To call on the strength of Christ, to put that stuff aside. To take off the old self and put on the new. The new that is made in the image of Christ. To put on the old, take off the old and put on the new. The, the, the incredible fruit of the spirit that is relationship based and not religion based is love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering. I'm going to talk about that one. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. The law of Christ is being fulfilled through our loving service to others. I don't know what your translation might say where mine says patience. When I look it up, oftentimes it's also translated as long-suffering. Long-suffering means this. It is an extended state of being patient and enduring Insults, abuse, mistreatment from others. That's hard, man. 
That's hard, especially when we are in a church where we're expected to encourage and uplift, as we're going to read about today. Sometimes in our churches, we shoot. We shoot one another. We talk about one another. Bless you. That was a good one. Um, I, I forget quickly where I'm at, man. It's something funny happens. Um, we shoot each other in, in church. We, we, instead of being a place where it's a hospital, we come and it's a battleground. I am blessed, and I want to say proud, but I want to be careful with that, of, of you as a church family. I hear from so many people when they come to visit how welcoming, how loving, how encouraging you all are. That we fulfill the law of God by serving one another. That we encourage one another. That we uplift one another. And with that, we help people to be able to get past long suffering. To be encouraged and to comfort, be comforted so that they feel the sense of hopefulness that comes in that relationship. One with Christ, but also with his body. His body that is made up of people who recognize there, but for the grace of God, go I. And God saved me. God loved me enough to do that. To be long-suffering in our flesh is almost impossible. Because if you're like most people, like me, if I'm wrong, I want to lash back. I want to reach across the table and slap somebody when I'm wrong. Or when somebody in my family is wrong. And what Scripture tells us and what Jesus' model is, is long-suffering. That we endure that kind of stuff with patience and with prayer because in the flesh I cannot make it like that but with the power of the Holy Spirit we know that all things are possible so we can get through that and we are willing and able to live in that humility and that's a tough thing to do those gifts that we just read in, in, those, in those verses are exactly what awaits us when we walk closely with our God peacefulness Patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Self-control is a tough one. I think for any, any human being, self-control is a difficult one, especially when we're wrong, especially when we think we're right. Self-control is one of those that exhibits the peacefulness of God. So all those things are said. I'm going to read the last passage, 20, 25, and then we'll work, work our way into chapter, chapter 6. 24, now, all, now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desire. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. That leads us right into the next passage. Don't use our freedom as, a, as a, uh, an excuse to put others down, to, see, to think that we are better than anybody else. We're made perfect in Christ, not better than everybody else. He says, don't use it as an opportunity to boast about who you think you are, who I think I am. Don't, don't use it as a, as a means to challenge one another. And as we're going to see, we are to come alongside people when they struggle. Verse 1 in chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, even if a man is caught in any tras trespass, you who are spiritual, you who are strength, you who are soldiers in Christ, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one looking to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thus fulfill the law of Christ. We've heard twice now in the last in these, these recent passages that we fulfill the law. Okay, we fulfill the law of Christ by serving one another, by putting someone else before ourselves. Paul wants them to understand in his whole letter, he has tried to make sure that this group of believers, as well as you and I, understand that the law of Christ is about grace, justice, and mercy. Not about self-righteousness and religiosity, which is easy to happen sometimes in our churches. We understand that uh, uh, humanity comes in, flesh comes in, and we start to think of ourselves as being more knowledgeable of Scripture. I've been in ministry for all this time. I should be able to have power in our church. Happens all the time. Because we lose sight of that message. And that is that we are to bear one another's burdens, not to push people down in their sin. Legality and religiosity and self-righteousness create walls between those who think they have and those, that those who think they have think the others don't have anything. Those walls are not 
welcome in churches. The law of Christ's grace, forgiveness, mercy, humility to serve one another, justice and mercy on that cross. There is no boasting in humility, no room for it. We're made in, a, in the image of Christ to be able to sacrifice one another. It says to bear one another's burdens. And I'm going to say this carefully. In order to bear one another's burdens, we have to know one another. And I don't mean you have to know every detail. Okay? But I want you to think about, think about this for a moment. If you've been here for a while and you think that Granite Lake Community Church is a church, how many people in this service the last few weeks do you not know? And why don't you know? And I don't mean you have to know everything about them. I mean, do you know? Them? Are you here when we pray? Are you in there when we pray? Do you understand that there are people who struggle? And I know we all can say, yeah, absolutely. I know people struggle all the time. I struggle all the time. But in order to bear one another's burdens in which we fulfill the law of Christ, we have to know one another in a way in which we can understand that someone is suffering so we can reach out. Bear one another's burdens. Sean has a burden to be locked up in a state penitentiary. It's his burden. It's a result of a consequence, okay? Consequences happen. But the hand of Christ reaches through the walls of a prison if we are willing to help bear his burden. We have to know one another. And that comes through fellowship. When I ask you to get up and move around, move around, that means get up and move around. <laughs> Shake hands with somebody you don't know. I know it's hard. Sometimes it's, it's hard. It's like, man, I'm just visiting. I haven't been here before. And he's asking me to wander around like a fish, like a salmon, interact with somebody. Yes, I am. And it's not because I think that's best. I think it's because in order for us to bear the burdens of another, we have to come across and touch one another. We have to come across and interact with somebody so that when we see somebody, we're reminded of them. Because I guarantee you, God will bring that person to mind sometime this week that you interact with, with them, that you hear something going on in their life. God will make sure that he goes, remember who you're supposed to be praying for. In fact, why don't you call somebody? In fact, why don't you write, sit down right now. You don't have anything really to do other than to watch this show and take a moment to write that letter. Take that moment to do that. There is no boasting in humility. No way of being able to intermingle those two things. Boasting, arrogance, and humility. They don't exist together. Jesus was an example of exactly of this. When we read chapter 6 and we read what we've read so far, I'm going to start in verse 4. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting. In other words, when we focus on all that I do, I, me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity, then that gives us a reason to boast. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. But if we look at it this way, that we need to regard one another and for each one shall bear his own load. We're responsible for bearing our own load. I understand that. Consequences. Sean is bearing his own load. When we have difficulty, when we make a sin, when we commit a sin, and we have a consequence that follows that, we are bearing that. But how much better is it to bear that load with someone else? With someone else coming alongside of us? Albert Schweitzer, an incredibly genius type of man, had two PhDs, one in physics, and I can't remember what the other one was in. And then he also had a degree in music. Phenom it was a concept based and phenomenal. And he gave it all up to serve others, to minister to others. And at the age of 85, this is a pretty cool story, at the age of 85, when he went with a, a, a group into Africa to establish a medical center, at the age of 85, this story tells me that we never stop serving. Ministry is not over until we go home. Ministry is not over until we go home if we're willing to be used by Christ. Albert Schweitzer is out with his team and they're walking around and they're walking up a steep hill. And all of a sudden, as, as these guys are talking, there's doctors, there's some uh, nurses, there's some other healthcare professionals that are walking with some young students and stuff. And all of a sudden, this 85 year old man takes off and walks this direction as they're walking up this hill. The other group are looking at Albert Schweitzer and they see him walk over to an old woman carrying a load of wood 
back to her home for heat. They watch him walk all the way over there, and he grabs the load from her back and puts it on his back and continues the walk to her place. <laughs> 85 years old. I'm 64, and I wonder, I wonder how heavy that load was. But it was not heavy enough for him. At the very end of the story about this, it says he, he came back to the group, and those, those people in the group were surprised that he would do this, especially at his age. They said, how come you did that? Dr. Schweitzer looked at the group and then he pointed back to the woman and said this, no one should ever have to carry a burden like that alone. That is the hand of Christ. That is the action of Christ. That is us and him in this moment fulfilling the law of Christ, bearing the burdens of others. We won't know what the burden is unless we are in fellowship with one another. Fulfill the law of life through Christ by encouraging each other. Hebrews 3, I'm going to ask you to turn to Hebrews 3. We'll come back to uh, Galatians. But Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 has a really good reference to us in this. And that is chapter, chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 12 through 14. And this is the same warning that Paul gives to the Galatian church. It's the same one that we've been hearing week in and week out as we've been going through this particular book. It says this, Take care, brothers and sisters, lest there should be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart in falling away from the living God. But encourage one another, day after day, as long as it's still called today, lest any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ, if, Circle if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. What I gather from this is that it's, it's hard to live this life out as a Christian. I know that in our, our, um, our country that Christianity is supposed to be easy. And I don't see that anywhere in Scripture. I see nothing that references that once we give our life to Christ, it's easy. I see just the opposite. We're called to long-suffering. We're called, we're called to suffer along with Christ and with others, to serve another person. And this passage tells me exactly that, that we, it is difficult. So we are called today to come alongside and encourage one another. We can't encourage one another. We can't come alongside unless we know a little bit about one another. Helping and encouraging one another is a, an aspect of fulfilling the law of Christ. I get email, uh, an email ministry uh, comes every day. And this one came this morning. I thought this was pretty, um, God's timing is always kind of funny to me. And this one made me laugh as soon as I opened up the e email. It says this, Psalm 1017, you hear, O Lord, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. And this is a story that went with me. There is a woman in my church who has a remarkable effect on people. <coughs> By the end of the service, there is often a small group of people surrounding her. She is not part of our church leadership. She does not teach and holds no authority. Yet people flock to her. In fact, when she audits college classes I teach, she has the same effect on my students, listening intently to them and expressing concerns for their well-being. People enjoy being with her because she listens. She encourages and truly cares. The ministry of listening small and assuming as it is, impacts people a great deal. Of course, ministry refers to preaching and leading and Bible study and offering ministry work, designing worship time and so on. But being a good listener gives ministry back to us. We may not all be good orators, but we can all listen. In the oldest book of the Bible, Job's friends came to him at his time of immense suffering. They cried and mourned with him in grief. They sat and listened, which turned out to be the very best way they could have ministered to him. We are called to fulfill the law of Christ by bearing one another's burdens. You hear this all the time. God was wise when he gave us one of these and two of these. We are called to listen. Someone else's story is more important at this moment than yours. Someone else's struggle is more significant than yours, than mine. That's why marriage is so tough. Because it's designed to sacrifice itself for the other. It took a long time for me to learn that lesson. Because I thought I got married for all of my needs to be met. 
when in fact I got married so that I could help complete and meet the needs of Jennifer. We are called to bear one another's burdens and we cannot do that unless we know the other person's, unless we understand the power of listening over speaking and expressing all of my things rather than how are you doing? God is our example in all this. And I think this, I'm going to read this very quickly. This is from uh, Psalm chapter 116. Psalm 116 says this. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. I love this, this line. It says, there, it says, because he has inclined his ear to me. What I get that is this picture of our God, just like he did in Christ. Bending down on his knees so that he can hear me better. The, the God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth and everything that exists, doesn't just stand far off and say, you need to speak a little louder. You need to profess a little bit louder. No, he says he inclines his ear, and I just picture the God who gets on his knees to hear. That's what we're called to do, to listen to get down and work with another person. That is the epitome of what Jesus did when he washed the disciples' feet. He served those disciples in a way that they were blown away by. That they just thought, wow, how, how, why are you doing this? Why would you even think about getting down and walk, why she washing my grimy, dirty, stinky feet? We are called to bear one another's burdens because as Albert Schweitzer said, no one should ever have to carry a burden like that by themselves. By themselves. The last passage I'm going to read is Romans chapter 15. All the way back to past where we were at. Romans chapter 15 is going to give us this last little glimpse into what it means to have hope in Christ. What it means to be an active participant in the law of Christ, of bearing one another's burdens. Chapter 15 of Romans. Verse 1. Now, we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses of those without strength, and not just to please ourselves. In other words, we're to step out and help bear the burdens of others, not to puff ourselves up, to say, look at all that I do, but to know that sometime, man, I'm going to need it. I'm going to need the same kind of care and compassion, because I will stumble and I will fall. We are to bear the weaknesses of those so that we will fulfill the law of Christ, not religion. Religion will stand back and say, <laughs> look at those idiots. They cannot get out of their own way. They're sinners. Just like when the, uh, 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 the Pharisee is standing over on one side, pounding on his chest in the public, making sure everybody sees who he is and how incredibly righteous he is. He must be so close to God. And he's pounding on his chest and he's praying so that everybody knows that he is arrogantly better than that guy over there. Because even in his prayers, the scripture says, I'm so glad I'm not like him. I'm so glad I'm not like them. I'm so glad I'm not like that person. Yet it's the taxpayer that says, I'm not worthy to even look your way. It's that heart that understands God. It's that heart that understands the importance of relationship with one another, but particularly with Christ. Let us each please his neighbor for his good. <laughs> anybody got good? Anybody got neighbors you'd like to see move? <laughs> or are you the neighbor that other neighbors want to see move? <laughs> this is a powerful thing here. Let us each please his neighbor for his good. <laughs> Go home today and edify your neighbor. Find some way to lift up your neighbor. Um, Jennifer, I should practice what I preach, huh? <laughs> Behind our house, we have an open field. <laughs> wide open field. Okay, it's, it's been awesome for 25 years. We've had uh, a guy who rode uh, horses with the uh, uh, this first uh, county sheriff's posse. Great guy. And he finally sold it. We thought about buying it, but you can't get access to it. It's just a place. It's just <coughs> Well, the new folks have started to move in stuff. Last night, a big container came, one of those big metal train containers. It's a lovely sight uh, to look at. And last night, I was out going, you've got to be kidding me. This is your pastor. Okay, sorry. You, I'm, I'm out there watching him pull in with this big thing. You've got to be kidding me. I'm saying it loud enough that maybe they might hear me. 
Are you kidding me? You're pulling this thing back? I have this vision of a whole bunch more junk coming in to our backyard area. I need to find a way to go to them and say, how are you guys doing? What's going on? Anything I can help you with? And mean it. So pray for me when I go through that process, okay? For whatever was written, this is verse 4, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instructions, that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Paul is wanting them to understand that the only hope we have is in Christ. It is the hope in Christ that allows us to love others well, that allows us to humbly bend down to listen, to take the time to absolutely listen to someone. Because it's easy to speed by that, especially in our busy life, which I think is important to understand, and I remember and I know how busy it can be, but truly, we can steal time from the enemy. We can steal that time from the enemy. We take the time to listen. How many of you would consider yourselves good listeners? Yeah, okay. Some of you, some of you are lying your socks off. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Some people are blessed to be good listeners. And then some are blessed to be good speakers, talkers. Okay? What God wants us to understand is that we cannot bear the burdens of others and thus fulfill the law of Christ without slowing down long enough to listen to others and to reach out and do something that blesses someone who has need of it. Giving you one practical way of doing that this week. Writing to Sean. Flood that young man's cell with your encouragement, with your love. You know somebody in your row that has needs. Bless their socks off by coming alongside them in a real, tangible way. Fulfill the law of Christ. That's what Paul wants us to understand. In your row today are people who have needs for encouragement. Guaranteed. Sitting beside you is someone who has need for encouragement. Someone in front of you, behind you, has need for encouragement because they bear a burden. And I don't know what that burden is, but God knows our charge from Paul, our charge from our Savior Jesus Christ, just like he did for us, is to bear the burden of others. That's hard to do. But with the grace of Christ, with the incredible strength of the Holy Spirit, we can do that. And this is what I'm going to tell you, and we'll close this. That when we do that, you will be amazed at how much you are lifted up. The moment you get outside yourself, the moment I get outside myself, woe is me, uh, me, myself, and I, and I minister, or I listen, and I interact, and I think about someone else, all of a sudden, all of this stuff kind of fails. It may not go away, but it fails. And it's always interesting about how that will come back around, and somebody will say, how are you doing? And it's their turn to minister and to bear a burden with me. When we leave this place, I asked us at the very beginning, did you come to be changed? Did you come to be changed to be made more and more like him? Because in that change is the ministry of our God. i got to tell you this thing. Uh, yesterday I'm walking around in Walmart. Okay? Encouragement comes in many different ways. Okay? Many different ways. And I'm walking along, walking by the TVs, <laughs> looking at these great big, big screens, going, huh, this would be nice to have. Moving along, trying to quickly get out of there, and all of a sudden I hear this, What's, it's a big, loud voice, and it sounds like the voice said, Pastor Bill. I mean, you're thinking I'm hearing from God. I'm not. Okay? <laughs> but I hear this, Pastor Bill! You know, just really loud, and I'm, I'm walking along, and then you know how you hear somebody and think, that sounded like that, but I don't think it could be. So I kept going, and I hear it again. And I turn around, and here's Abby and Nash. Look, little Nash is hanging out in the cart, you know, Pastor Bill, you know, and, and I can't believe how much encouragement I get from that. That three rows over, this little guy is yelling out at me. And as soon as I get over there, he gets, ah, oh, you're not that important. I'm going to go elsewhere. You know? I got your attention. I'm going to worry about you. Your, your boys, man, crack me up, and they encourage me so much, man. Um, in some way, find a way to yell at somebody this week. 
And I'm not talking about absolutely <laughs> yellow doves or something. Judy, how are you? You don't have to do something like that, okay? I'm not saying that. But using the Holy Spirit, reach out and encourage someone. Let the Holy Spirit find someone for you and let him move you in a way that uplifts somebody else like little Nash did to me. That's an incredible thing when we get uplifted by God and his servant. Be his servant this week. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for uh, so many gifts in our life, God, so many blessings that fall upon us from you. Father, as we were praying in this morning, and I love how Tony phrases this, and that is that we're each given a measure of time, a measure of health, and a measure of life. Father, that moment that we are born, that measure begins to diminish. Father, help us to use our measure effectively. Help us to use our measure well to love on others in order for them to feel encouraged. God, you call us to a powerful role in this world to fulfill your law, and that is to bear one another's burdens. Father, help us to think about that this week. For those that we live with in the same home, for those that we work beside, for our neighbors, for those who are in our community, are there ways in which, God, you can make us aware of the burdens that others might feel? Help us to take a step to fulfill that law and encourage others. Father, we love you and thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a really good day. Remember, Jennifer's right over here. She promises two minutes. Okay, two minutes. So the two-minute warning begins. <laughs>